Hi everybody, how are we doing? Uh, today we are going to cut the 111 face of gold out of a FCC pack gold unit cell. And as most of you may know, the 111 plane is not an exposed face of such a gold unit cell. And what I find is that a lot of experiments, uh, for example, in heterogeneous catalysis, they have some form of absorbate molecule, be it a diatomic gas, uh, maybe a fullerene molecule, on top of a gold 111 surface. But when you go and get unit cells of gold for computational modeling, uh, the 111 plane is not an exposed face. And so if you want to construct heterostru <coughs> excuse me, a heterostructure like this, uh, you're going to need to expose uh, that 111 plane. And I find it to be the process of exposing the 111 plane is not <clears throat> readily available online. I don't, I don't find many sources um, that will tell you in detail how to do such a thing. And so I feel like there's a lot of motivation behind making this video. And so without further ado, let's get started. So what you're going to do is you're going to go on the internet uh, probably to the crystal crystallography open database and get a gold unit cell. Here I've gotten a uh, face centered cubic gold unit cell and loaded it into Vesta. <clears throat> and I have three of them here. Excuse me, my throat's a little scratchy. I have three of them here and uh, you'll see why in a second. So first thing I'm going to do is go down to boundary and I'm going to make the boundaries five by five by five. It is a little excessive, but I like to have a lot of uh, room to work with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to expose that 111 face. So first we need to identify it. So I go over to Lattice Planes, I go to New, and I'm, I'm gonna make it dark blue. And uh, I'm going to change the Miller indices from 100 to 111. And uh, as you can see, the 111 plane in my original unit cell is being shown. So I'm gonna move it into the middle of this new supercell, so to speak, that I've made. So let's move it over about seven. Okay, so here is the <clears throat> 111 plane. And as you can see, this is definitely an internal plane. And so what I have to do now is I have to imagine that this plane is the surface of my new unit cell. And so I have to define in this dimension going up and down uh, a periodic point in this supercell. And here's what I mean. So you can see here, if I take this atom where my cursor is on, where is the next periodic point for this? And it happens to be up here or down here. Okay. So I'm going to select this atom up here as my next periodic point. So I come back to lattice planes and it's one, two, three up. So my new uh, distance will be 10. Looks like it went down, so I have to make it four. Okay, so now you can see that I have defined periodicity in this dimension. And uh, that's all good and dandy, but the problem is now I need to define an additional dimension. And ideally, I would need to, find to define periodicity in three dimensions because our new unit cell will be three-dimensional. Uh, here, I'm only going to do two dimensions for reasons that will become apparent soon. So now I need to find a plane perpendicular to the 111 Miller indice. And uh, one such plane that is perpendicular to this set of Miller indices is the... Uh, I believe it's minus one zero minus one one zero plane is perpendicular, and it is. You can see here. Uh, by the way, while you're doing these simulations, you're going to want to keep or simulations constructions. You're going to want to keep this blue plane that we originally made, the principal plane. I will call it uh, to be perpendicular to the plane of your screen at all times. And so now, what I need to do. As you can see here, I have the distance from the origin at some strange fractional increment. I'm going to make this zero. 
and press enter and it's moved it back to my new origin so to speak no well, through here and now i need to define periodicity in this dimension going left and right and you can see it's rather straightforward it's just going to be one uh unit cell so to speak to the right if we're in units of our original unit cell so i will form another one and move it one uh, unit over okay it's okay that we move to the left here and now basically you can imagine that this where my cursor is here is going to be our new unit cell and so the next step in this procedure is to cut around or cut out all atoms that are not enclosed or a part of this new unit cell. Okay. So, so far it looks good, except for now we would need to define a third plane uh, perpendicular to both of these planes. I find this component of the procedure to be a bit messy and chaotic, so I don't like to identify this third plane. What I do is I just sort of shift the unit cell like this, keeping this a blue plane perpendicular to the plane of my screen, and I can just eyeball the, the next plane that, that would be cut, and I, I find it conceptually simpler. Okay, so I just would cut around it here. You can see now I've identified the periodicity with my eye just uh, without needing to invoke cutting of another plane, but you could complete, could easily cut another plane and, and do it that way as well. And so now here, actually I have my new unit cell. This, this is our new unit cell, and you can see here the exposed plane, uh, which in our new unit cell will be in the Z dimension, or the C dimension, is the 111 plane where originally in the unit cell we began with, the 111 plane was an internal plane. Now in this newly formulated unit cell, the 111 plane is an exposed plane. Now that leaves us with one last task, is we need to identify a transformation matrix that is going to take us from our original unit cell, so those original basis vectors, into a new set of basis vectors that can uh, define this new unit cell or, or our target unit cell. And so how we're going to do that is you're going to open up an Excel spreadsheet and you're going to basically set up this table. Okay, so you can, it's just a couple lines, you can pause the video, set up this table. Um, once you have this done, you're going to come back to VESTA and you're going to first click on the atom that you want to be the origin of your new unit cell. Okay, I, for conceptual simplicity, will choose this, this atom here. And you can see here I have the X, Y, and Z components of this atom in terms of the old unit cell. So what I will do is copy these down, 2.5, 2.5, and 2. So I go to my Excel spreadsheet. And in this column O, which stands for original or origin, I will put 2.5, 2.5, 2.0. 2 and then I have to define the basis vectors with respect to this uh, origin. So I will make my A dimension going this way. And we have 2, 2, 3. Okay. 2, 2, 3. And now I'll make my B dimension, or Y dimension, going back like this. So I have 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 2, oops, 2. And my C dimension will be this way, 1.5, 1 1.5, 1, 1. So I have 1 1.5, 1 1.5, 1. Now, what I need to do is define a new set of basis vectors or actually, I will just now define these A prime, B prime, C prime with respect uh, to the origin or relative to the origin. So all I do is I take the value of one of these uh, distances. So in this case, it'd be the cell I4, and I subtract the origin. Uh, and here, you're going to want to put a dollar sign. Okay, then I move it over like that. So you can see it's just this column minus this column, this column minus this column, uh, no big deal. 
move these down, we now have I5 minus H5, I6 minus H6. Okay. So that's, these are now the relative coordinates uh, of the basis vectors for my new unit cell with respect to the origin. So now what I'm going to do is use this as a transformation, ma transformation matrix from my old unit cell to my new unit cell. So what I'm going to do is open back up VESTA. And so what you can do is open up a new window in VESTA. So here I have the original gold unit cell that we started with. I, I am then going to come up to edit, uh, edit data, unit cell, transform. Here is where I will insert in this new data. So you can see in the far right column, I just have minus ones. So that's, oops. Here I have minus 0 0.5. I believe here I have 0 0.5 and then here I have a 1. Okay, now select OK, yes, OK, apply, and there we go. Here's our new unit cell. And as you can see here, this unit cell is a lot different from our original unit cell. So let me just take a snip snippet of this unit cell. Okay. You can see that this unit cell is very much different from the new unit cell. And how is it different? It's different because in the original unit cell, this was this plane here. Okay, this was the zero, zero, one Miller indice. And in this, this plane up here where I have uh, in the C dimension is the 111 plane. And so now what I would do is I could expand this unit cell here and place an adsorbate or molecule on top of it. And now I would be able to perform subsequent electronic structure calculations of molecules on the 111 face of gold. And as you can see that this, this unit cell is the same as the one we cut here. Okay, uh, thank you for your time. In the next video, I will do a different unit cell, possibly one with two atoms, maybe calcium fluoride or uh, zinc oxide, something of that nature. I will cut and expose an internal plane. And it's a little more complicated because identifying the periodicity in those unit cells is not as straightforward. In other future videos, I will show you how to make a heterostructure using, uh, for example, this gold. I'll expand the gold and put atoms inside, or we can look at doping schemes. And in even further videos in the future, uh, we will look at how to take these unit cells and load them into electronic structure software programs like Quantum Espresso, and how to like relax these structures and uh, and so on, uh, and do some complicated electronic structure calculations. Complicated relative to a beginner, but uh, as you grow, they should become less complicated, but it's hard to uh, get going, and I understand that, and that's a motivation for me uh, making this channel. So thank you for your time. I'll see you next time.